All right, guys, and I'm back with another top 10 adult comic list. Now, this is really a part two, because if you haven't noticed, I did a part one a few years ago, and I really love that list. I think it really still stands out. But the thing is that it's been almost five years, and a lot of comics have come out, and some that I actually didn't get to read till recently that are older that I really want to put on a top 10 adult list. Now, what is that? As you're watching this, you're wondering, oh, is this going to be a naughty list? No. Well, slightly. Uh, these are comics that I feel are aimed more for adults or that you have to be an adult to really get a lot of what they're talking about. Now, this doesn't mean that you are a teenager, you read these and you don't enjoy these. You certainly can, but I feel like you have to go through some various stages in life to really appreciate what these stories are trying to explain and just experience in life in general, which happens as you get older. So, these are... 10 comics that I really think are aimed more towards adults and also that you might not get until you're an adult completely. So anyway, enough of my talking, let's get into it. So I'm starting my list with number 10, The Resistance. And I like to start this list simply because to me, it's a grown up version of the show Heroes. Do you guys remember that show? I sure do. It wasn't great after season one, but the story here is a virus spreads and infects people and some are given powers, and we follow multiple people dealing with gaining powers, and it very much is a grounded version of superhero stories, dealing with signing deals to join my teams, or starting a resistance movement, or being hunted by the government if they don't want to register, sounds familiar, uh, all things that you can actually see happen in real life if this was a reality, and that's what kind of makes it chilling in a way, and also very enjoyable. Now listen, this is very much... Uh, like I said, more mature theme. So it is a lot of talking, a lot of political intrigue at times, but a lot more in depth of what people are going through during this than superheroes punching each other. So if you're into that, I think you would really enjoy it. The first two volumes are currently out as I'm recording this, and I really do recommend it for fans that want a more mature, darker look into how a superhero or powered world would look in the future. My number nine choice is Harleen. Now, this was a weird title because when I first heard of it, I didn't think I would like it. I'll be the first to admit, I'm not really a Harley Quinn fan. I'm not even really a Joker fan. But this title, despite having a huge focus on the two, is actually a bigger tale about mental breakdowns and even some PTSD. It also has gorgeous art, as expected from this author and writer. But its real win here is the deeper look into the psyche of Harley Quinn. Watching her slowly descend into madness is both fascinating and really sad to watch. And I feel like you would only really fully understand if you're older, if you've been in relationships, even if it wasn't a bad relationship, or if you were in a bad relationship where you were used or abused, you could probably relate a lot to what this story is telling. And I think it hits a lot of good marks and instead goes beyond the typical Harley Quinn and Joker story that you normally get. And I cannot recommend it enough for fans for the art alone and my number eight is men of wrath now if we're going to talk about dark and mature theme i'm gonna to have to say look no further than this series because this comic is almost too violent at times uh it is written by jason aaron and art by ron uh, garney i believe and it is a chilling tale of violence only begets violence now we've had that theme before but it actually works really well here because it's about an old hitman who takes a job that actually affects his entire family forever. Now, it seems typical, but when we get deeper into the characters and what happens, well, it's fucked up is the nicest way I can say this. Um, what I really have to put up is warnings here. I know some people are like, well, warnings? No, this one, you need a little bit of warning. This involves murdering adults, kids, babies, and it's more of a revenge tale of crime and it does not hold back. I would not recommend this for anybody who does not like violence. This is truly, uh, when you say mature title, this is only for people who can handle mature, gross, fucked up events. And this is one of them. All right, my number seven is Jessica Jones Alias. So this is the series that was written years ago by Michael Brian Bendis. And I'm going to put a second superhero title because this one really stuck with me, even though I've read it years and years ago. So, like I said, it's written by Michael uh, Brian Bendis and drawn by David W. Mack. And this is a superhero title, but it really isn't. If you're a Jessica Jones fan or if you watch the TV show, you probably get an idea of how this is going to work. But <laughs> this comic is something special in my case. Now, I'm a big, you know, like, detective going private eye 
type storylines. But here, it's what the people do and the language in particular that this is definitely more R-rated. The violence has definitely stepped up a notch in this series, but what really hit me are more of the adult-themed things, especially with the sexual nature of Jessica Jones and how her relationships go, but even more so with Purple Man. Now, you probably know him from the TV show. He's pretty infamous now, but this series or this book definitely goes a little deeper, in my opinion. Now, I really like what they did with the show, but here I felt absolutely hatred for this man i did in the show but more so here so if i say that you gotta read it um again more uh, more mature themed a lot of cursing a lot of violence a lot of sexual stuff so if you like that stuff and you're okay with it i think you really like jessica jones and uh i can't recommend it enough the omnibus actually dropped yesterday go pick it up it is so good all right so we're gonna go into east of west a political world building extremely harsh world the end of the days are coming and the four horsemen are unleashed. Though one isn't following the pack, but instead is being hunted by the other three. This is written by Jonathan Hickman and drawn by Nick Dragata. Hopefully I'm saying that right. This was a lot of themes. And when I was a young adult and started reading this, I actually didn't really catch everything. Upon rereading it about a year or two ago, I greatly appreciated what they were telling and doing with this story. The fight for being a good parent, a fight for proving your love to your family, a fight for protecting those who you hold dear, even with your own life. On top of that, there's some great political intrigue here. And even if that's not your thing, if you don't want any politics here, it's just that it adds to the tone and character. So it's well worth reading, even if you don't like to talk about politics. But I think it really helped. And again, this is a fictional world, so calm down, people. You don't have to get your pays in a bunch. This is definitely worth checking out. Number five is a newer one, The Nice House on the Lake. Now, I'm taking a gamble on this one because I've only read the first half because that's all that's done so far with this series. So that's issues one to six, and there will be 12 full issues, the later six coming out uh, next year. So this is hitting all the marks for me i'm gonna be honest this starts off with a bang with a fantastic ending to issue one that hypes the rest of the series so i'm not gonna tell you what that is because i really need people to read this without going in with any spoilers the comic smartly though slows down and gives a deep look into being trapped not just the physical sense of being trapped but the mental state that you're going to be in and what if there was nothing you can do to escape and where would your thoughts go where would you go what would you do it's a look into loss it's a look into depression suicide and a lot more and that's what i love it does not hold back and this definitely earned its m rating because a lot of the stuff people go through in this you could probably feel it at one point in your life and be like damn that would probably be me and that's pretty special so again it is pretty mature. It is pretty fucked up what happens. So I do recommend it for adults only. But if you want to read something that is dark as hell and some great twists, check out The Nice House on the Lake. So my next one is Postal. And this is a strange, weird, and absolutely thrilling experience once you get deep into the town of Eden. Written originally by Matt Hawkins. And at first... He was doing it and then eventually given to Brian Hill and then drawn by Isaac Goodhart. I believe I said all those names right. Woohoo! This is a story of a young man named Mark who suffers from Asperger's. And he's growing up in a town filled with mostly criminals. And they range from different crimes to, you know, stealing to murdering. <laughs> and uh, you have to kind of live in this town. And it's run by his mother, who's the mayor. So that's interesting. So you got a lot of layers here. You got a lot of things going on. Uh, but as you get deeper into the story, things get a lot darker. And it deals with a lot of great stuff like betrayal, death, racism, and a lot more. Uh, this isn't an easy series to read. Uh, but I think a lot of fans of things like Breaking Bad, The Wire, Justify, things like that on TV. If you like those, I think you'll really enjoy this series. And I think Mark is such a interesting and actually well-written character that he actually is one of my favorite in the current last few years um i would definitely check out postal if you like that dark gritty kind of drama mixed with 
in uh, suspense because a lot of stuff that happens in this, you're going to be on the edge of your seat till the next issue. All right, my number three is Ex Machina, an oldie but a goodie. It is written by Brian K. Vaughn and drawn by Tony Harris. And it is all about a man named Mitchell Hundred and his dream to become mayor of New York City after being a superhero for years. So listen, this is a political drama action thriller, and that I love to see. I am a big fan of politics, and I'm a, well, I'm a big fan of stories that add in politics to make it an intriguing story. I don't really give a shit about politics when it's just there, but I really liked what they did with here. This is tackling a lot of topics that were in the early 2000s, and they're still relevant even today. With today's politics being so split, it's nice to see a book tackle it head on, and really do it well. I really feel like you get a lot of different viewpoints in this. And some you might agree with surprisingly. Now this is a story that is drawn to perfection. With a dark tone throughout. This is a mature title if I've ever seen one. And if you had any doubt. The ending to this series is absolutely jaw dropping sad. So I really recommend this. Only for the people who want a dark story. Definitely more political angle. And they love a beautiful drawn story because this is amazingly drawn. I really love the art in here. So yeah, check this one out. Coming in at number two is a newer one too with Swing, written by Matt Hawkins, as I mentioned before, and his wife Jenny um, Chang. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. And drawn by Linda Sejic, uh, who's actually the wife of the guy who did Sunstone, as the, was on my last list. So there you go. Now you got a little... You know, fusion of great artists. Uh, and this is a fantastic sex romance drama with a good amount of comedy sprinkled throughout. This is a spinoff of Sunstone or at least in the same universe as that. And that was previously my number one on the top 10 adult list. This is my number two. And what I really liked here is that the characters. It's just about two people, husband and wife, and they're trying the swing lifestyle out. Now, if you don't know what that is, that means that you mean another couple and then the guy goes with the other girl, and the other girl goes with the other guy. So basically, you switch partners. That's what the swing lifestyle is about. And while this sounds like anyone who's horny can get into this, it's actually a deep look into marriage and issues and problems and solving them and fixing them and working together as a family or a unit. It's really only for a mature audience, obviously, but I really think that a lot of people could relate to this one. Even if you have no interest in, you know, swinging, that's fine. This is definitely a series that I think anybody can check out and be like, oh, I, I've been through, I, you know, similar things in my relationship. So again, the reason why I do this as a mature title is yes, there's sex in here, but I feel like you won't connect on this unless you're older and you've been in some serious relationships in your life. So check this one out. It's called Swing, and it's almost done with four volumes out, the fifth completing the series coming out in 2022. And my number one is Stray Bullets, a story that pretty much stuck with me since the first time I read it a couple of years ago. And it's still going, though. I think it's like on some type of small hiatus right now. But it's written and drawn by David uh, Lapham, I believe that's how you say his name. And this is a crime-driven story mixed with high stakes and a lot of jumping around timelines. In fact, this might be the darkest book in the entire list, really, if I'm thinking about it. Because there's no superheroes, there's no monsters, aliens, or anything in this. It's just about street crime. Robbery, murder, rape, death, all of that, and more. And it's not an easy read, for sure. But with compelling characters, excellent dialogue, and great art, it really fits the tone and the mood and the story that David is trying to tell. While there's a lot of stories in here, and you can kind of read each issue by itself... It's really what works so much is that eventually some of them start connecting. And when they do, you go back and read the last story and be like, oh, shit, that character. So I really love what this series does for the overall timeline of jumping around. I think it works really well. If you haven't read Stray Bullets, I got to say, what are you waiting for? If you're a fan of any crime drama or just everyday drama in life with mature and obviously some violent issues, you should check out Stray Bullets. Pick it up. It's well worth it. Go get it. All right, guys, and we're at the end. So, 10 more comics that I've suggested to you that you should be reading right now. Listen, there are so many great mature 
titles out there. There really are. And, you know, some are edgy, some are dumb, some are over-the-top silly. But I think the ones that I list here, I think anybody who wants a mature story will enjoy. Maybe it won't click with you, but I think somebody out there, if you don't like it, somebody else will who wants a mature story. So anyway, that is now 20 mature stories. If you haven't watched my first video, go check it out. But with that and this list, you got a big number of comics that you should be reading if you want a M-rated story. And if not, well, check out some of my other lists of superhero comics or other funny comics and so on. But yeah, that's my list. I hope you guys enjoy. If you have some that you will list for some great mature or adult rated comics, put them below. And I hope you guys all have a great day.